So I would like to call the February 16th, 2022 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting to order. Could we please start with the roll call? Erin Angel said that she would be absent this evening if she couldn't connect. Um, she's out of town. So we have Scott Conlon. Here. Jeff Ellen Bogan. Here. Manoj Gangwa. Here. Paige Lewis. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. And Tim Waters. Here. Thank you. Thanks very much. Great to see everyone. Our next item of business is approval of the agenda. Did everyone get a chance to look at the agenda? Jeff? Yeah, I have a change and then a request. So I'd like to postpone the uh, new business B board candidate interview process. Um, the council gave staff direction last night and we are waiting for the city clerk to give us uh, some more direction and anything I would say this evening would probably be incorrect. So I think it's best that we wait on that. And then I would like to request that we move new business A up under public invited to be heard so that uh, Bryce can do his presentation and, and head out after that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you're proposing really just to move to switch new business and old business. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Any other proposed changes to the agenda? If not, then I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I motion to approve. Uh, I motion to approve the agenda as amended. I second. Need that. a second. Okay, great. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. The agenda is approved. Okay. Next, we need to approve the previous month's minutes. Did anyone have any changes to the minutes? I had a couple of small just edits that were not substantive, so I can just send those along via email. Okay, not seeing any changes. I need a motion to approve the minute. I motion to approve the minute. Minosh. Great, thanks. Second, anyone? I second that. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Jeff, you're good. You didn't vote. <laughs> I wasn't at the last meeting, so I didn't feel like I should do that. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Um, the minutes are approved. Great. Thank you. Uh, so we don't have any public invited to be heard, so I would suggest we just move to new business per Jeff's request. So Jeff? We'll introduce I, this. Yeah, I, I can real quick, Jeff, I can just jump in and introduce prices. That's where we're going next page. Is that where you are? Mm -hmm. So, um, for this group, I think you know that since um, I think most of you have been on, we've hired a new senior ranger out at Union Reservoir. Um, Tim Bertaste was taking over that responsibility, helping out for a while. Um, Bryce has come on and um, really started to help us make some changes in that direction, including some new staffing will be coming on. And just want to give an overview of what we're doing from basically now with our open space properties all the way out at, you know, um, basically I-25 up to Button Rock and everything happening between and, and Bryce is going to go ahead and kind of give us a presentation of what they're doing and what the season's looking like coming up and then he'll be available for questions afterwards. 
Thanks. 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 Tips. My name is Bryce Obrey. Uh, been a park ranger for about 10 years now with Utah State Parks, City and County of Denver, um, City of Aurora, and then I just started this position about seven months ago. We've got a little presentation for you guys just to kind of give you an update on what the ranger program looks like today and then kind of what our outlook is for 2022. And Bryce, I, I don't want to sorry to interrupt you. Can ever hear Bryce okay, or is he you just get a little closer to his microphone? You know, everyone's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you, Bryce. He's a little quiet, so I yeah. thought he's a little quiet too. So the hair. Let's do that. <laughs> Everyone see that okay? So right now we have five full-time rangers, uh, three are based out of the Union Reservoir, and then there's two more full-time rangers up at Button Rock Preserve. And right now we're interviewing for two more full-time rangers that'll be mostly responsible for the greenways, um, urban parks, Lake McIntosh, basically all the areas that are not Union. Uh, we also typically hire three to six seasonal or temporary rangers. And they usually go from March to October to kind of help us with the busy season. Uh, the purpose of this position, um, park rangers provide resource protection, community outreach and education, public safety in city of Longmont parks, open space, greenways and public lands. So that's kind of our, our daily mission and our, our focus. Some of our essential duties, like I said, public safety. So we're working towards getting all full-time rangers emergency medical responder certified. So that's a little bit of a bump up from basic first aid and CPR, but it's not quite an EMT. Uh, we feel like that's a good baseline for us to have just to be able to respond to certain emergencies that we might encounter. Uh, we're also working on getting our full-timers wildland fire certified or red carded. Um, that way we could help out with any sort of wildfires that may be up around Button Rock, or if we wanted to do some controlled burns in town, that's something that we could assist with as well. Uh, we do some law enforcement, so that includes verbal warnings, educational contacts, friendly reminders, um, but that can go all the way up to mandatory court appearance, summonses, tickets, penalty assessments. Um, it just depends on the situation and what the violation calls for. Uh, we also do resource protection, so we're responsible for any aquatic nuisance species inspections for incoming watercraft at Union. Um, we also do forestry work up at Button Rock, so the guys up there are pretty much in charge of keeping the, uh, the area safe, keeping the trails clear, um, doing any chainsaw work. And we also do visitor outreach, so plenty of answering questions, uh, directing people how to best use the parks and open space areas and just providing that level of customer service. So some of our accomplishments from last year, um, we drafted a new comprehensive ranger manual that basically is a guideline for how we operate. Um, that includes standard operating procedures and a field training academy. So we're, um, we'll all have a, a basic level of training. And if we run into any situations, there's gonna be an SOP that we can follow to know exactly what to do. Uh, we have a new record revenue at Union Reservoir, a little over $700,000. Um, I know the rangers that have been here for about 20 years said that typical revenue when they started was about $50,000. So come a long way since they've been here. Uh, we've set new uniform standards. So I've ordered body armor for all the full-time rangers. So we'll be wearing external ballistic vests, just as that extra layer of protection for some of the contacts that we do. Um, occasionally we'll contact homeless camps, so it's not a bad idea to have that level of protection. Um, you know, the guys up at Button Rock will contact hunters, landowners, people with rifles in their hands, so it never hurts just to have that extra lever of protection. Um, also getting us badges, so currently we don't have like actual metal badges, so that'll be in addition to our uniform as well. Um, Price and I, the other senior ranger, attended the COSA meeting. Colorado Open Space Alliance. Um, so a lot of really good talks, trainings, conversations, and networking there. Um, so it was good for us to have a presence at that meeting. And then the Button Rock Rangers, they support forestry and water resource operations up at Button Rock. Um, that includes the red card training and clearing vegetation and debris. So they did a lot of work up there to kind of get that place cleaned up. 
Um, one of the big things that's going to be new for this year is at Union Reservoir, we're going to have gate operation hours. So in the past, um, once rangers left Union Reservoir, whether it be 8, 9 o'clock at night, um, there was no one here. So what happened, happened. We dealt with the mess in the morning and we just did it all over again. Um, but starting March 1st, we're going to have gate closing and opening hours. So we'll open the gates at 6 a.m. We'll close them at 8 p.m. Uh, until we get into our summer hours, which is 6 to 9. Fall hours would be 7 to 7. And then during the winter, uh, 7 to 6 p.m., which is when we're also close to trailer boating. So we think having this like level of protection will help keep the, the area a little more clean, a little more safe. Um, and it's just helping us control access so that things that are happening at night aren't happening. Uh, we also have a uh, patrol boat for Lake McIntosh. So we'll be able to actually go out on the water, contact people, uh, address some of the issues out there. Um, it's a kind of an inflatable boat, something like a, a Zodiac that has a pillar gas motor on it. So we'll be able to zip around out there, contact people, and just be able to have that extra layer of safety if we do rescues on that or whatever we need to do. Uh, we do have a new ranger dock at Union, so we'll be able to dock our boat there and not take up the public dock not getting people's way and people won't be in our way so if we need to get on the boat quickly we have our own dock easily access it and, and take off from there our plan for this year is to have more cross training with the parks and open space rangers like myself and then the watershed rangers up at button rock so if they ran into an issue and needed an extra hand um, i would be fully trained on how to operate up there i can help out also, if we ran into trouble here in town, the watershed rangers would have an understanding on how to operate in town as well. So it's a little more cross training and as David likes to say, plug and play. So if I need someone here, I can grab a button rock ranger and then you know exactly what to do. Um, we're also using survey one, two, three for data for contacts and patrols. So if David or someone asked me, so how many contacts have we had at Dickens Natural Area? In the past, I wouldn't have a really good answer for him. Um, but using this new system that you can see below here, like all these pinpoints are some variety of contact that we've made. So I'll be able to pull that up, be like, okay, so we've made contacts here, 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 and starts to create a trend of hot spots and know where we're at, maybe where we need to be more often. I think that's going to be useful for us this year. That's kind of all the updates I have for you today, and um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or clarify anything that uh, maybe you need. If if I could ask the chair, if I could have right. just a if I could have just a moment to maybe yeah. um, pull a couple more things out from Bryce that I think before you ask answer some questions, I think if I could just follow up. Um, one of the things that you talked about, Bryce, were, was the, the boat for rescues and stuff out there. Could you talk a little bit more or share with um, the board on kind of how rescues play? I think you guys take for granted um, what you do out there as far as rescues and stuff. Do you have any idea how many rescues you typically do and what those look like? Uh, so I think our number from last year was close to 120. Um, that can be as simple as a paddle border that got knocked off their board and the wind took it away and we had to go plug them out of the water. Um, occasionally, it's something a little more serious, like a, a turtle sailboat where the mast is pointing down in the water, and that's uh, it can be tricky, um, but it's doable. But yeah, it can range from something pretty simple to a little more hectic, especially if it's like a large wind event where we have a hundred paddleboards out there. Then it, it's going to be a yard sale, and it could take a while to get everyone either to shore or back on their boards. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty common for us to do that on the weekends during the summer. And it gets pretty windy in the spring as well. So as soon as we open the boating, once the ice clears, we'll be ready for rescues. Yeah, I've, I've been out there actually having parents come into the ranger office just thanking the rangers because they've had kids out in the water blown off and had no idea where they're at. So okay. I, I think, you know, that our community doesn't really rest, recognize really um, what you guys do out there on a daily basis. So I just wanted to share that. And then the other piece that I just was hoping you could touch on a little bit too with our, our kind of change. You mentioned that increase in revenue. One of the things that we really have done, and I think you brought a great piece to, is that work with recreation. We've shifted some of the responsibilities and your background is a similar situation where you work with recreation. Can you talk a little bit about how you're working with recreation and how that's working for you? Yep. So um, 
we're trying to kind of create a, a joint effort here where recreation is handling a lot of the revenue driven items like uh, the entry station, uh, anything that's going to make money. And then I'll be able to assist them on some of the public safety resource protection and just work together, even though we might have different goals and motivations, we still want the best for the citizens of the long line in the end. So it's a joint effort with maybe different backgrounds and different work groups, but we're all working for the same thing. Here. Great. I'm sorry. I'll thank you very much for that time. Um, and I'll, I'll turn over to the chair to ask questions then. Yeah, no, thanks to both of you. It's really great to get that overview and to understand how those resources have been bolstered recently. Any questions from the board? Nicholas? Thanks, Paige. Uh, first off, Bryce, thank you for the, the update. Really helpful. Um, my question is uh, related to the 2022 uh, patrol boat that's going out for Lake McIntosh. Yep. Um, my question on that is, uh, is that uh, part of the mission there going to be uh, uh, keeping an eye out for the max boat limit that we have for Lake McIntosh, or is it purely uh, rescue? Um, rescue is going to be part of it. I've, honestly, I've never rescued someone out of a Zodiac, so I don't know how easy or hard it is. We're going to find that out. but. Um... As it was last year, we were mostly patrolling by shore. So if I didn't catch the person before they launched and they were, you know, 100 yards out on the water, yelling at them is not particularly effective. I mean, they might come back, but for the most part, they're going to wave at me and just keep doing whatever they were doing, knowing that there's zero chance that I'll ever be able to go out there and actually do anything. Um, so being able to contact people on the water, um, it's going to be a big difference. I can actually address some of the issues out there. So it's going to make it a lot easier than just, I don't like to yell at people. That's, that's never really a good way to go about it. Um, but if I can gently cruise up to you, be super friendly and address an issue, I think it's going to go a lot better. Um, the capacity issue, that's something that we would definitely be able to address easier with the boat, definitely. David, did you have a follow-up? And then we'll go to Dan. Yes, it may be one of those things that, um, we need to talk about as a, as a group here too, because the capacity issue within the Macintosh master plan was one of the staff recommendations. But if, if prices go there right now, there is nothing in our ordinances or on our signs that say that's an enforceable piece. So it was a recommendation, I think, as that body was talking about ways to help better manage that property. It was one of the pieces that I know for neighbors was frustrating because they read the management plan and see that recommended number. But at this point, we don't have a capacity number on that body of water. And back then, as Dan Wolfer, who's not on tonight, would talk about, you know, paddle boards weren't even a thing back then. So to think about, you know, people bringing out boats and launching or sailboats, it wasn't sort of that idea would ever get that sort of capacity out there. The other piece that I just kind of go back to is we looked at why we're trying to keep those numbers down. A lot of that really was for the management of that critical wildlife area, the western end of that. Um, Bryson Ranch has been doing a great job of getting those buoys out sooner, trying to make sure we're keeping people out of that area. So the capacity issue, I think, is something as we look at how we try to manage that, it's going to be really challenging because as I've walked that for the last couple of years through COVID, even before Bryce was here, I mean, if you've been kicking people off on one side, they'd be putting it on the other side. So I think unless you had really some really strong controlled access points, um, it'd be hard to manage a specific number. I think what we're, our goal really is, is to make sure that people are respecting the wildlife, they're respectful to neighbors. And as Bryce talked about, that we'll make sure they're safe. So the PFDs were a big piece. We had a lot of people out there that just bought their first um, paddle board, stand-up paddle board. They didn't have personal flotation devices and definitely a concern for us that they were on the water without having some other to either make sure they got that piece of equipment or left the water. So that, that's where we're at in that. And if this will I talk a little bit more on what this group thinks about what we should be, be looking at, um, we can do that. But for right now, I think the way we're kind of looking at it is that was a great recommendation at the time. Um, I think practically it makes it really hard for rangers to enforce that. And if we're looking at the underlying objectives of that, if we can achieve those, I think that's what we're, we're really shooting for. Thanks, David. Dan? Uh, yeah, to follow up on the Lake McIntosh, um, my experience, I mean, I, I'm over there every other day walking the dog. And on a beautiful summer day, well, I've counted upwards of 75 boats before. And I, I think you're right, David, there's just no way to stop that. It's too nice, it's too easy. The part that we should be worried about is that folks are treating it like the Union Reservoir Beach. There are plenty of folks swimming 
and there's no rope. It goes, you know, people go as far as they want to go. I mean, that's a, a, an accident waiting to happen. So, and so I wondered, Bryce, what's the plan? How many days of the week or how many hours of a day is patrolling really going to happen? My recommendation would be any nice day would be the day to be there because the numbers go up dramatically if it's a beautiful day. I mean, no surprise. So I'm just curious if there's a plan or we'll work it out as we go or what your thought is. Um, part of it's gonna be work it out as we go um, until we're completely fully staffed with the two new Rangers that we're interviewing for now and then a full um, temp and seasonal Ranger staff. Once we're at full strength, I don't see why we can't be out there every day that it's gonna be nice necessary uh, will we be there all day every day that, that might be a little unreasonable right now but frequent check-ins with the boat i don't see why we can't make that happen oh great i had just didn't know what the feel was if this is a part-time thing or a full-time thing great okay in the past we had the two full-timers that were at union so if it's nice over at mcintosh it's going to be nice at union too so they they just didn't have the opportunity to even go over there really or if they did, it would be a drive-by. Yep, there's battle wars out there, and then come back to the Union. Um, but with the additional staff, I think we'll be able to address these issues a lot more frequently. And we do have an ordinance against the swimming in that body of water too, so that that is enforceable. It's not like that number. We do we do have an ordinance, and it is signed out there too. So definitely, it, Bryce is great at you know trying to gain voluntary compliance, and if people do that, I'm sure that's where we'll be fine. But if not, they have the the ability to enforce that. Well, the ramp on the north side, mm -hmm. uh, forget the name of the park, and then the beachish kind of area by the volleyball court on the south side or the fallopian tube statue, that's the <laughs> one that, well, you all know what I mean if you go yes. by there, but that beach is a popular place to swim and folks set up tents. It looks just like Union. It's a great spot, but a lot of folks swim. Yep. Bryce, I'm just going to share with the group because you guys are out. This board is, I think I appreciate this board. If it's biking or other reservoirs, you're out there a lot and helping to share some of these messages. One of the reasons that we're so concerned about that is we don't, with Union, we have a swim beach which requires us to test the water. So Bryce and his crew are testing that water. We have a body of water out there that we don't know the water quality. We have agriculture and livestock upstream from that. And people are in that water without us and them knowing the quality of that water. So if you're out there, I mean, we don't want to put you in that forceless thing, but anytime you help get people have better understanding of what's happening out there, um, I think it's beneficial. So it's a lot easier if I have a good option for someone. It's like, you know, we have a really great swim beach over here at Union that you know, the water quality is known, it's going to be safe. You have a lifeguard. If you just tell people no, that doesn't work so great. But if I say no, but you have this great option here, that usually goes a lot better. Is there signage about the lack of testing, sort of unknown water quality? Nothing. I'm that would discourage that. me from swimming. <laughs> I mean, That's, I don't know we, if it's posted out there. I don't think it is, but something would be a great idea. It's like Bryce said, people have, giving people a no and giving people a reason for not doing something so they help make their own decision always is a, a great piece that we can use to our advantage and their advantage. Yeah. I guess I was just going to ask, I'm sure it does cost money, but I, I guess I wondered how complicated would it be to do water testing, not to necessarily open up the swimming more, but just to know. And I guess my attached question to that is, if people are paddle boarding, they have to be falling in the water. How is that any safer than swimming? And I don't think there's a real answer to that question, but if it's okay to paddle board and fall in, then it's probably okay to swim unless you're drinking the water on purpose. I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I guess, why, why don't we water test there? I think a couple, I've asked, I've actually asked those same questions too. I think, you know, again, I think as we go back to look at that master plan, it really was written before we had, you know, people on boats doesn't follow boats as much as, you know, you look at off the paddleboard piece. So it really is a piece that if we're having people and knowing they're going to be paddleboarding is something I think we may want to consider. Um, but one of the real reasons for testing is when we have a, a swim beach and maybe Jeff could jump in there too, if he has anything on that. But I, th I think that really becomes the, the trigger point is when you have a swim beach. So people are pulling off their paddle boards. It's that incidental contact. I think the state looks at that differently than if you're inviting people into the water to swim. So um, that's my wildlife biologist take of that answer. If, if something is a swim beach, does that then require a lifeguard? Is that, I mean, I guess I'm wondering like, 
why not make that little beach by the statue of swim beach? I imagine it's because you have to have a lifeguard. Yeah, the city, the city requires that any bodies of water that people swim in that we do have to have lifeguards. With the master plan that David's referring to, it was always outlined that there would not be public swimming at McIntosh. So there really hasn't been ever a plan to do the testing or to have lifeguards there. Thank you, Jeff. And Jeff. Steve, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just add that um, one of our goals when we do, when we update our master plan, uh, our parks, trails, recreation master plan, is we really need to relook at all of our aquatic bodies and what the, rec rec the desired recreational uses are at each one of them. Um, we're buying land on the west side of McCall Lake. You know, do we want to increase the fishing there? Do we want to do something different at McIntosh? I think that the technology has changed a lot since we last really thought about how we want to treat each of these water bodies. And so uh, and when I say technology, I mean boating and uh, inflatables and, and uh, paddle boards and things like that. So that will be one long term long term goal is where we look at all of our water bodies that we have recreational rights to and uh, see what we can do to make things safe. And um, what's logical for that balance between recreation and uh, habitat. Anos, did you have something? Yeah, was uh, in 2021, was there any life-threatening incident was there? Right, Bryce, did you have any, any anecdotal stuff? Because I had a couple, so. All right, what was the question? Yeah, uh, I, want, I was looking, um, was there any life-threatening incident last year? Life-threatening incidents, um, the only one that I'm, very aware of is we had a kid fall into the oligarchy when the um, parents weren't watching. I think it was like a two, three, four-year-old kid. Um, luckily, one of our seasonal rangers was pretty aware of the kids playing by the oligarchy. Um, so he was able to run down there and pull the kid out of the water. Um, the parents didn't even know the kid was in the water. Um, so yeah, we gave him an award for that, for being hypervigilant and taking action for, for that rescue. Um, if you want to call some of our boat rescues life-threatening, um, that might be appropriate for some of them, probably not for all of them. Okay. Um, and I don't have a good count on all of those. Um, using that Survey 123 program that I spoke about earlier, we're able to log boat rescues and all of that as well. So you know, a year from now, if you ask me, so how many boat rescues did you do at Union, I should be able to give you a very accurate number on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, any other final questions? Great, thanks so much for joining us, Bryce. We really appreciate it. No, thank you, I appreciate the opportunity. Okay, our next agenda item is going back to old business. And we have, um, Revisiting and finalizing our 2022 agenda calendar and then um, sort of follow up discussion on recreation facilities. So, I, should I kick this off, Jeff and David, based on our, is it okay for me to share my screen and just share what's in the packet for the discussion? Yeah, Aurora yep. or Nikki, can you help us with that? I can do it. I have it pulled up. No, I mean, they, I think they have to give you permissions to do that. And oh, okay. They did. Yeah. All right. You're ready like to go, Chair. Permission. You can now share your screen. Awesome. If I can find it. Okay. 
So as you hopefully recall, at the last meeting, we did some initial brainstorming about agenda topics for our calendar for the year. And Jeff and David and I followed up on that and um, tried to put as many of those topics uh, in, in a meaningful way throughout the calendar over the year. And Jeff and David also brought some additional uh, topics that they proposed and we talked through. So I think probably it'd be best if we just kind of go through this and have some discussion about whether this makes sense and if there's any additions or changes that we want to make before finalizing it. And I will, a couple of things I wanted to note um, I put on here, you'll see future recreation facilities as kind of an ongoing topic for this board, because I feel like it's been something that we have all had a lot of interest in and have prioritized and wanted to engage in. So you'll see that there, I'm proposing that that be a priority item of this board to address in an ongoing way at meetings throughout the year. But would love to hear your thoughts and feedback on that. And then I think we might want to do something similar with master planning, but depending on what schedule that actually follows, because I think when we talked last time, um, we were thinking or the staff were thinking that that was going to be moving on a faster or different time frame than perhaps it is. So, and we did make some changes already because Button Rock has to be moved, I think, to March and the new board candidate process is being postponed. So um, obviously this is not absolutely fixed. We can update it as we need to, but uh, it will be good to, for planning purposes to have this sketched out. And I will also note, I would love for us as board to have some kind of board retreat. You'll see I plugged that in just as kind of a note in March. I think that's something that used to happen more regularly pre-COVID and um, maybe by late March or early April, we could actually do something in person. And I think the idea would be just to pick some topics that we really want to learn about together. So it wouldn't be a formal like voting business meeting, but more of a learning opportunity for us as a board. So um, with that, I would love to open it to, well, first, Jeff and David, if you have anything you want to say, and then we can just open it for discussion. No, I I guess I, I, yeah. Sorry, David. No, I was going to say, I just apologize for not getting button rock on this time. We had a scheduling snafu for another meeting, which caused a domino effect. So um, we, we definitely need to squeeze that in there and get that, that caught up. But um, that's the only thing I would say is just thank you for being flexible with us. Jeff, anything? No, and I guess the only thing I'd say is the new board candidate will uh, interview process. We'll probably try to talk about that in March or April. Um, since we really aren't involved with that process until the end of the year, we do have some time with that. Great. Okay. Yeah. Dan, you want to kick us Before off? We lose, David, I'm curious about the button rock. I filled out the questionnaire, you know, the uh, talk to Longmont, whatever it's called. And I got okay. the impression things were happening soon, like city council is approving it, like before we meet in March was the impression I got. We, we had to move everything out. So um, I'll just be honest, this group, you know, we really try to get it through. Dale Rademacher, that leadership team to kind of see those presentations and those questions internally, then take it to the boards and then take it to council. We were not able to get to Dale's leadership team. So that really bumps everything out. So there, there really ah. is, there's honestly no sense of urgency in the fact that we have grants pending on this. We have to get staffing for this. We all just would like it done. We realized with COVID, it took longer than anyone expected. So our real sense of urgency is just getting it done. But Making sure we follow our sequence of getting all the all the right boards and stuff done just causes us to push it out a little bit. Um, like like I say, it'd be nice to have it done, but we're just going to end up having to bump everything a little bit. Okay, great. So we get to take a look before it goes to city council. Is exactly. That's what. Yep. Okay. So that's we we're not only are you being bumped, but all the other boards are being bumped and councils being bumped as well. Got it. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. And thanks for doing the survey. 
Great. So any other, I mean, hopefully you guys saw this and I can go off of share, but um, we have, you know, the recreation facilities ongoing, master planning, we've got capital improvement projects, both current and future, um, looking at open space and greenway considerations, potentially in pending development, St. Brain Forest Health Partnership, uh, comprehensive trail systems and building trail connectivity, several different aspects of recreation programming based throughout parks maintenance and open space stewardship. So hopefully an interesting year. Councilman Waters. Uh, thanks, Paige. I, I'm going to go back to Button Rock just for whatever it's worth. In our uh, in our queue, uh, David and Jeff, uh, it looks to me not looks to me it's it's in the queue of a of a council discussion in a study session on March first of the Button Rock management plan and and its relationship to code updates. So um, I assume you're aware of that. Um, and I. Will get we were, but I'm not sure. I, we will get with Dawn and make sure that everything kind of sequences out. I just, I just got Danielle just gave me the new sequencing of all the different dates. It took a little bit of work to do that. And I, I think the ultimate goal is to make sure we end up at, you know, council. When we show up at council, we'll come with, you know, this has been looked at by staff, by leadership, by these boards, and you'll get that with that that context around it. So all right, well, we'll, those things, are, what's in the queue, I always think of as tentative until we yep. get a formal agenda, just, just so you know, in yes. the queue, it shows on a study right. session on March 1st. So. I believe that's being pushed out and I will double check that. Thank for, for the reminder that's still there. Steve. Um, so I just wanted to know, I saw on the ideas that there's master planning updates and master planning discussions almost monthly. I, I'm wondering if you and the board can provide staff a little bit more detail about what it is you're looking for there, because that's a very broad topic. Um, the update to the parks and trails, parks, recreation and trails master plan might not be, even be started until third or fourth quarter this year, if they're so I'm just I'm curious, we want to get, be able to pre prepare for you what you want, but I'm not sure that it's clear to us what you're looking to us prepare. Steve, I can see Jeff, do you want it? Since you probably had the most recent conversation on this, would you mind starting it? I could share what I know then too. Yeah. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I met with the city manager about uh, a number of different topics. And one of the things that he uh, was recommending is that a number of the master plan processes that were being planned for this year be put on hold, including the Parks, Rec, and Trail master plan. And, and his concern is, you know, staff is in some cases already overburdened with the, the amount of things that they're working on. And, and, in, and especially with uh, what I will say, Steve and Kathy, and uh, his preference would be that instead of doing additional planning for more parks or facilities, that they would actually be able to do some of the work of getting more parks actually worked on and completed. That is that is different from his direction on the recreation master plan, which is about the, the programming side of recreation. And he really wants us to move forward with our process um, because he wants to really have us check in with the public to see what their views are post or towards the end of COVID and to see if their interests and their desires have changed at all through the last two and a half years of experience that we've had with COVID. So Jeff, I appreciate you, you doing that because you know Jeff and I have these conversations as we're working on you know that parks and recreation piece of this. Um, so as he shared that information with me, I went back and checked with Dale and Dale confirmed today that that's the direction he's been hearing too. So I think Steve for staff and for this group as we get kind of more direction on um, how things are going to be changed or how um, that time that was going to go to master plans is being looked at to try to get more work done, which I think everyone agrees 
is, you know, something we all could be doing. Um, we'll be happy to share that with this group and staff as we get a little bit more clarity on that. Yeah. And the one thing I'd like to do also, Ben, if you could turn your camera on. Uh, ben Wagner is a area supervisor in recreation. Ben and Jason Stoltz will be leading the master plan process for recreation. And so Ben will be attending our meetings probably throughout this year and maybe longer. But uh, as we have updates, we're going to have it as a placeholder on the agenda. And there might be some months where we, we really don't have anything to report, but uh, we want to have it in there just in case so that we can keep the board uh, informed and getting feedback from them also. So thank you to Ben. And, and again, you'll be seeing him uh, quite a bit in the coming months. Great, thanks to both of you. Yeah, the intention as Jeff said was really to make sure that if one or both of those master planning processes was, was gonna go forward, that this board would have you know, all appropriate opportunities to be engaged and, and up to speed in, in that. So that's why we put it on there as an ongoing item, sort of pending more understanding of what happens, the timing of the process. And, and there might be months where we, we don't have anything to report on the uh, recreation uh, facility, but again, want to have that as a placeholder so that uh, it's always uh, reminding us that we're working on that. I'll give a very quick update to it. Jason and I are gathering up our ducks and just trying to figure out what we don't know about the whole thing right now. Um, and then getting to an an RFP for a consultant at some point um, and purchasing is very busy. So getting through to them in the next, hopefully six to eight weeks. That's about it right now. Are you working on a consultant for the master planning process to help with that? Is that what you mean? Yes, for the, the public input part and to, to help gather just as we did for the last one. We'll do the same for this one. It'll be updating last one so hopefully not quite as involved um it was a good document then uh, but certainly time for an update with everything that's happened in the last seven years great kathy yeah i just wanted to add that while we kind of wait for that direction on where to go with some of the master plans including the parks recreation open space and trails master plan um we are, we are talking about um you know, what we might need in the interim. So even if we don't proceed with the full process, the full public process, um, we have talked about, and we'll probably want to check in with you all of needs that we might have in the interim, you know, and one idea we've talked about is maybe just a report card of what was planned in our current master plan. What have we gotten done? Where are we at? What do we still need to do even based on the priorities that we have in the current plan? Um, so that might be informative to this group and the staff, at least to have a check-in, <laughs> you know, and kind of a report on where we're at. So even if we don't move forward with the full-on process, um, we'll still probably want to chat with you about maybe what to do in the meantime. So I think it'd be good to have some time on the agenda for discussions like that. Great. Thanks. Board member Dan, did you have? You look uh, like no, you might be I, saying. Nope, thanks. You'll tackle it okay. later. Scott? Um, yes, I think just on the um, calendar, looking at the uh, CIP process, I think last year we discussed we wanted to kind of have an idea of the candidates for CIP before we just voted on a CIP. You know, I, I, I think one of the challenging things for me as I've come in here and we, we I've learned our CIP process and how those projects are laid out. And we really have a one year CIP, but it's a five year plan. So as we're going through and looking at, like Kathy and Harold recognized too, we have projects that are seven, 17, 18, 19, 20 projects that we're still trying to finish up. And as we're looking forward to you know, that 25, 27, um, it gets hard to really make any really firm decisions that far out. So I think you know, a lot of times we get, as we bring stuff to this board and we'd like to get input and feedback, 
a lot of times we're really locked into that plan that's been laid out there five years ago and, and where we're really still at. So we can definitely try to get that to you sooner and later. And I think having a better understanding of how we can utilize this group to figure out our priorities. And as Kathy said, especially if we get some direction to try to get more done, uh, we'll be talking about what we need through the CIP process and the budgeting process um, to try to get the resources we need to try to get more of that backlog of work done and then try to take more forward look as well. So, and I kind of sharing a little bit here because I have had, you know, um, board members asking about, you know, that backlog and what we need to get that done. So as we go through CIP and budget process, I'll be definitely bring that forward to this group. Okay. Steve, right. Kathy, um, and I, I'm going to kick this back over there because, you know, they, they had to trade me in this whole process coming forward too a little bit. So um, anything, if you'd like to add to that, please do. Yeah, so part of the challenge is that we as the project managers have to have our projects cost estimate, proposed years, proposed operational dollars, proposed design and construction dollars to David. I'll make up a date by, by March 18th. And then David has to talk about it with Dale and his, his leadership team. They, they could need a week or so. And then there's like a three week period where leadership mulls all the different projects back and forth. And then staff has to go back and make changes based on what leadership is saying that we, we should make. Trying to find the sweet spot for Prab to provide input is hard because we're not ready to give it to you yet because we're still working on it. Um, once David gets it, he's already taking it up to management and we can ask we can ask leadership if we can bring it to the board, but how well the board will be heard, I really don't know because it is a complete juggling act looking at, you know, funding something in the library Staffing. versus something in the police department versus something in natural resources. Like it's not just natural resources stuff. So it's outside the purview of the, the this board. So believe me, we've been talking about this for 20 plus years I've been here, haven't found the best way. Open for suggestions. We're open to provide interim documents, letting you know where we're moving toward. But to, it's it's it, because you guys only meet once a month. It's hard. We, the, the whole calendar doesn't stop for the whole city. Everything is, keeps moving on a on a week to week basis. And so finding that sweet spot in order to get the input that I believe that the board would desire to provide is just a challenge. And I'll just add. I do like what I see on the a calendar right now is one month we're talking about 2022 projects um, and then the next month we're talking about 2023 and maybe beyond. But um, what I recall last year is I, I think it worked pretty well because we were able to talk to you all about um, kind of our work plan <laughs> and what fits in our work plan as well as that forward thinking with the with the CIP. So um, what I think worked well is that we were able to check in with you all about what is in the queue and just be honest with you about this is what's in the queue. This is what we're working on. This is what we've been directed that our priorities are right now. <laughs> and then, you know, this is what we can fit next year and maybe look at 2024 or a couple of years. And then really just make sure that we're not missing something like there's not an elephant in the room that we're just you know we're just missing or our priorities are are off kind of things like that I, I feel like that's what we did last year and I thought it worked well um, but until we um, kind of get more aligned <laughs> staffing wise looking at those adding more and the new stuff. It's just really, we're looking way out in 26 and 27 before we can start adding um, real new ideas and new projects, but it's still good to check in and hear from you all. Councilman? Uh, I'm not, I don't know how the, how, whether we'll be asked the question in this budgeting cycle, anticipating 2023 that we were asked last year. And it's the only time we've been asked as a council <clears throat> if what are our what are our recommendations for framed as one-time expenditures 
Um, and for me, uh, just so happened, I had some back pocket proposals to make and made them to Harold. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not certain what other council members do with respect to the budget and what they might or might not submit to the city manager. But I will say to David and, and to Steve and to Jeff and to the board, it would be a missed opportunity to, for me to not have uh, a short list, uh, kind of a back pocket list of <clears throat> potential priorities for the 2023 budget if we get that question again this year. Thank you. We'll, we'll definitely make sure we try to take care of that, that opportunity. Other questions, comments about the calendar? I mean, does the idea of having the recreation facilities, new recreation facilities as an ongoing item make sense to all of you based on our previous conversation? Is there anything that you see missing? Jeff? I may be speaking out of turn, but I do that a lot. Uh, I guess my question for the councilman would be, is that even something that he thinks is worth spending our time on right now. Like Aaron gave us some of his opinions in the past about maybe that would be worth talking about, but I guess I'm curious how much legs does a new, a new recreation facility even have in the next year, just as a concept, because I know it's years before it would even be built. If you don't advance the conversation, it will have no legs. Okay. Right. So Paige and I've talked about this. Um, uh, I, I would encourage you uh, to be to become as as clear as you can possibly be about what your priorities are, what you think the city's priorities ought to be, and I've encouraged Paige uh, to lean in, and I would encourage all of you to lean in on on the council and with the council uh, to get an answer to the question: What where do we where does that fall as a priority for this city council? And um, and uh, you know we've got a couple of other big things in the queue like a follow on to a feasibility study for performing arts and conference center. We're anticipating a library feasibility study that is now months overdue. I think it would be a mistake for us to get far into those discussions without recreation facilities in the, in the mix. So I, 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 what I'll promise you, I'll make that a priority for me. That will be in the conversation if you guys are, are ready to have it. Awesome. Well, then I think we should talk about it a lot on this committee because it has been something that I feel like for years, this is my third year on this committee, we've all wanted to move in that direction. I feel like we all have, right. I should for everyone. Yeah. Uh, that was my question earlier and thank you for restating what you said last meeting, Councilman Waters. You brought up this good point that we need to be ready and be clear and be prepared to voice our opinion or you know the city's opinion if we can gather enough info that that's an important thing and not miss the chance to we discussed it last time you know if there's a big bond issue then we should be part of that like it that's how we got the rec center built 20 odd years ago was being part of a big plan you know instead of one thing that anybody could vote against. Instead, eh, maybe let's do this. Let's make the city better by doing X, Y, and Z or whatever it is. So I, I'm totally in your camp on this one. Uh, last night during the council meeting, if anybody watched, and if you did, you ought to go get a real a life. So you have something <laughs> to do on Tuesday nights other than watch council meetings. But uh, a topic of conversation, um, <clears throat> uh, one of the topics was what kind of, ballot questions we were talking about potential changes in the in the charter specifically as as those changes would relate to the election process and and what we've learned through this last election cycle and some tweaks that we'd want to make <clears throat> but the but there was a, a corresponding or a parallel question about what other potential ballot questions might the staff bring to council to put on the ballot in november um and i i just as we get into those discussions, there ought to be some sharp thinking about whether there's a ballot question in 2022 or not, when we're talking about ballot questions generally, to remind the council and the public 
that this is a real conversation. Uh, we 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 haven't come back to it since 2018 and and the pool and ice proposal. Um, but we need to reinvigorate that conversation and be clear on where it falls with the other questions that we'll consider whether it's 2022 or 2023. And frankly, Dan, if that conversation, if I rotate off council and I don't get, I don't have a chance to be in that conversation, I'm going to be disappointed. So I think we can continue some of this under the recreation facilities item. Um, so let's, I don't want to stop the conversation, but I do want to, if there's anything else we need to add or amend on the calendar before we approve that and move on, I'd love to hear that. Steve? Yeah, Paige, just as you know, setting up a tour is always uh, quite the endeavor. So the earlier the board can try to look at that and suggest some dates for council and things, get that dialed in, um, the more successful I think you'll, you'll be in trying to get something set up. Great. Appreciate that. Any other questions or proposed changes to the calendar? If not, uh, I think we should probably officially approve it. I'm looking at Jeff. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, if I could get a motion to approve the calendar as included in the packet. Jeff, are you moving? I'd be happy to make a motion to approve the calendar from the packet. Great. And I need a second. Dan, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. We have a calendar. Thanks, everyone. So our next item of business, we have already been kind of making our way into was just to um, again, revisit this idea of new recreation facilities, what the status of that is in terms of conversations with the council, conversations with staff, you know, what is the best next step that we as a board could take, I think, in order to encourage the city to be moving on at least gathering information that could form the basis for a future um, ballot initiative. And I don't know, I noted that Ben, or maybe you just said that there is going to be information gathering in conjunction with the master planning, but would we, would we need to do something different in order to revisit public opinion in a robust way around recreation facilities? Yeah. So I think there's two parts to that question. Um, we want to get some feedback on the master plan again as it relates to the impact COVID has had on recreation or if there even is an impact. So I think we'd start that first um, and have some of that information help us with the, the, the new rec facility. My, my belief is that uh, when we did our last contact with the public, which was in January of 2020, which would have been right after the um, bond election that we did uh, for Pool and Ice. The public was very supportive of it. And I still believe, and I don't, it, I, I, this is just me talking, I don't have anything that says this is why I think it, but my belief is that for 10 years prior to COVID, People were, were routinely saying that we needed a new rec center because the current rec center is too busy. I think as masks come off on Friday at five, I hope our world changes and that people uh, continue to come, come back. I, I think we're averaging it's around 580 people a, a week right now. Prior to COVID, that number was 1,200 a day. So the, the, the impact of masking and social distancing has been very large. And, and so I continue to meet with the city manager with 
uh, Karen Roney, the, the director of the community services department. I have uh, given them a proposal to consider also hiring a, a consultant to help us with a design to review the financial side of that, as well as to help us evaluate the location um, in an effort to be prepared to uh, present that to council. And, uh, and I think along the way, we will have some initial check-ins with council to verify that, you know, the, um, at least a majority of them want us to uh, move forward with that. And, you know, any support that Tim can provide to us uh, will, will be excellent. So I, I'm, and, and then the other thing is, I think it would be important for the board if that's what you choose to do is to make some type of motion that you feel that uh, a new rec facility is, is a priority and uh, we would encourage uh, the city to try to move forward with that. Yes. I don't remember when we discussed this last, but I feel like in one of the most last few meetings that I attended at least, there was a conversation about doing another survey of the public to find out more and about what they would want in a rec center, like getting away from competitive pool and ice to like, what do we actually want? And I guess I'm wondering, I felt like we never even got to the point where we fully understood how that process would even happen. I know that it costs money to do a survey and right. it wasn't clear to me, A, if we needed to do it and B, if we wanted to do it, was that the correct next step? And then C, how would we get the money to have a survey process happen. So, I mean, I, I'm all for like making a motion and saying, I'd be happy to make a motion that says the board is in, in favor of moving towards a rec center. But I guess I'm wondering what are the tangible steps and how do we actually take steps instead of just talking about it? Like what's a step we can make like tonight to move the ball forward? I think the motion is that step. And then I would ask for your patience with me as I, as I work with uh, the city administration um, I believe that we have a funding source to fund it, but until, you know, the city manager and, and Karen are on board with that, I, I think it would be premature for me to say a whole lot about that. I, I think that when, when we built the Longmont Rec Center, we would look at doing that same type of process with a consultant where we would go through a, a request for proposals and and that work would include public meetings that would uh, get their input one of the one of the best meetings I remember in my 23 years of being with the city of Longmont was the design charrette that we did at the senior center and uh, we did what we called a, a card game and we had about 120 people there that night and they were able to design their rec center that they wanted in each of these groups based on having a eight million dollar budget and that we had on the cards it cost this much to build a swimming pool it cost this much to build a, a gymnasium and what was very unique in what I would say there's probably 12 groups that virtually every one of the groups designed exactly the same rec center and it's the one that we have on quail now so it was a pretty cool process except for the part where people were yelling at kids that they don't get to vote because they don't pay taxes yeah well that wasn't very fun no but the overall process was good and would really hope that we could do something along that line again. And, and part of what uh, Paige and I and, and David wanted to talk about is uh, this evening is to get some of your input on what you think that process should look like in um, engaging with the public, um, maybe getting some feedback from you all of what you think should be included in, in that next facility. Dan? 
I was at that meeting, Jeff, and I remember that too. That was fun. And I think we must go that way again, specifically to counter the word competitive that was in the last budget proposal. That was the, in my opinion, and I think some of the feedback we got was the problem. And the folks we talked to were all on the same page that we wanted a 50 meter pool for our girls and boys to go race in. And that's not what the general public voting wanted to hear. So I think that's a great, even if only a hundred people come, you know, 10,000 people will hear about it and realize, oh, we're designing the rec center. So I think, I mean, almost building another rec center like we have is probably what a lot of folks would like, only in a different part of town, um, just to spread it out or spread the wealth and spread the crowd. Uh, but we should get direct feedback to that effect by having a meeting where you get to design one or you know you get to pick a place um, you know under these constraints, et cetera. But I think more buy-in early will help get anything passed later. I mean, maybe this is all obvious, but it's clearly a lesson we need to have learned from three years ago. Yeah, I, I would agree. And, and I think we would also have meetings with stakeholders, whether those are swim groups or you know, basketball players, or you know, we would reach out to pickleball people to get as much feedback as possible so that we're not only talking to the general public, but specific user groups as well. So one thing I was wondering about as we were talking about this, you know, we you also have this notion of a potential second outdoor pool facility. And, you know, there's we don't know exactly the future of Centennial and how that might fit. And so part of why the wording on the calendar items is sort of recreation facilities. I mean, it might be a facility or facilities, and I just wonder if it makes sense to, as at least part of the scoping, to look at, you know, how we might maximize the opportunity in expanding, you know, new recreation infrastructure for the city. Like, can we, do you think it makes sense as we're talking to the, to the public, not just about, you know, another indoor recreation building, but could we think about things like, and you know the out the new another outdoor pool as part of this scoping. I, I think we could. Or and, other uh, other things. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the the rec center next month will be 20 years old, and and there may be uh, a reinvestment that we need to do there also to kind of polish it up a little bit, if you will. But I I, I don't think that we should limit ourselves just to a conversation about. Uh, a new rec center. I, I think that's probably all of our priorities, but what are we going to do with Centennial in, in the master plan? It talks about converting that from a swimming pool facility into more of a community center where the area where the pool is, is exactly the same size as two full court basketball uh, courts. Um, you know, there's the possibly the renovation of, of Sunset, the addition of another large outdoor pool. I, I think we should not narrow our conversation too much that maybe it can't all happen at once, but that we talk about the, the full need of, of what our community uh, is interested in. Other thoughts? Uh, are you going to say something? Um, yeah, if, um, I, I guess the question is, um, does anyone on the board believe that there isn't a need for more recreational facilities in the city before we put together a motion for it, which I think is our next step? But I'd like to hear somebody, if somebody believes that we have more than enough. Um, doesn't seem to be this way from being on the board, but... <clears throat> Like, like to listen to a contrarian if there's a contrarian on it on the board first. And it's okay to have that opinion. We we would like everybody to to share what they think their thoughts are. That that's a great point, Scott. Mm -hmm. 
I am not raising my hand to to say that we don't need it. I'm raising my hand to add to what you're all saying, but I, I think we do need more. Can I chime in? It didn't seem like anyone had a uh, a dissenting vote towards increasing rec centers. Is that a right page? Yeah, go vote ahead. On that thing that Scott just said, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess all I wanted to know, and this is maybe directed to Jeff, is like, Sunset, for example, if a bill, if a or or quail, if a facility just needs to be updated, there's some form of prism budget or things like that 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 are incremental, like repairs and things like that, as opposed to taking Centennial and converting it to a basketball court. That would be a a shift of what the facility is meant for. Like, there must be a budget for both quail and Sunset to keep it running, right? Or is that not true? Yeah, there is a budget, but I I think that. Part of what I'm talking about is at the rec center, not only paint, but one of the things we'd like to do in the pool area is replace the water slides. We'd like to add a new, larger water feature for the younger kids, the, the smaller slide. Um, you know, updating um, the climbing wall, all of those things that are beyond what we have in our, our operating budget to do. So are you suggesting there's some sort of, I mean, this is not a full master plan, but some sort of like proposal for the whole portfolio of rec centers that would be like change Centennial and update Sunset to do X and change uh, Quail to do this. And also here's this amazing new facility and you're suggesting that's one proposal yeah, and, and certainly it doesn't mean that we would go forward with all of them. We have all the information. I think we want the uh, city administration and council to have the full picture for them to be able to make uh, the, the decision on what does or doesn't go on a ballot question. Do you, do you imagine, I'm sorry, I'm having this conversation, but do you imagine that for a quail, for example, you listed some ideas, do you feel like it's this board's place to to brainstorm on our own ideas that we think we should add? Or does that feel like something that staff already has and it would be more of a you presenting, these are the things that we'd like to include in a upgrade to Quail. Is that more of the direction you would imagine it would go? Uh, it could be either way. I certainly would be interested in hearing the board's feedback. I think the parameter I would say is it's gotta be within the envelope we have of a building. It wouldn't be adding on, you know, another gym or anything like that. Any other comments or questions from the board, Manoj? So we already exercised a few times and passed the motion to go into that direction. Uh, I don't think any one of them was against or any point was made against it. So I think uh, we are following, we're going into that direction. I would like to announce that sometime soon I'm going to have to help my daughter go to bed. So I would like to preemptively vote in favor of whatever motions we make. <laughs> <laughs> so there are enough of you that you don't need my vote either way. I vote yes towards whatever we come up with as a group towards this. And I'll be back as soon as I can. I'm not leaving yet, but I will have to leave in a few minutes. Well, I think it would well, be- I do cool. have some proposed language if you want to hear it, but I don't want to cut off discussion. Yeah. So- <laughs> I think it's appro more appropriate that Jeff is with us if we're going to uh, entertain a, a motion. I can tell you when I need to go and we can decide if we're at a point and I won't be gone for more than six minutes. Your daughter is better than my son then because he would never go to sleep that fast. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That's pretty I'm impressive. Just doing, no, I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just doing the I love you, good night part. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um. Nicholas, is there anything you want to add before we consider any motion language? Uh, no, I'm excited that we're revisiting it and now it feels like a, a more appropriate time to, 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 to dive into this. Um, one thing that I put in the, in, in, in the, the mix is um, certainly we want to, when we, we have these conversations about uh, designing the rec center, certainly want to make sure that it's meeting the public's needs um, and is going to appeal to a wider uh, group of folks. I think I also want to make sure that we're we're thinking about um, the sustainability of it from a perspective of um, uh, will it cover itself in terms of the revenue we're generating from it? 
where you have to cover the expenses of the maintaining the facility. Um, and that will, um, might help us uh, and, at the, uh, on the ballot side as well, because I think it will make it a more compelling offer. So one other thought I wanted to add to the mix. Other than that, Great. is that it? So can okay. I respond to that page? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on where you draw the line of what we're going to recover or not. Um, I think the general operation of the facility will be recovered at 100% or greater. But that doesn't include large replacement. So a f a, just a couple of years ago, we had to replace a HVAC unit at the rec center. That replacement was paid for out of the facility maintenance budget. So it would not cover those kind of things, but the, the cost of staff, the cost of you know general maintenance, it would cover that utilities, but big items, it would not cover cover those. And and what I would say we would propose is that if we believe there's going to be a shortcoming on the amount of money to maintain it, there would be some type of operational support we'd need to ask for because it wouldn't make sense to, to build this brand new beautiful building and then we can't afford to maintain it. So it would, it would have to have a, a, a possibility of an additional or yeah, additional tax to help pay for that. Okay, so I've just been trying to draft something we might quickly consider. So let me just read it and we can discuss the language. Um, so the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board urges the Longmont City Council to prioritize near-term action on the public scoping, financial analysis, and conceptual design needed to pursue expanded recreation facilities for the city. Further, we respectfully request a reply from the council regarding the status of this discussion. So we can keep or not keep the last sentence, but just hoping to hear back. <laughs> uh, my thought is that they will get back to us. I don't think we would need that. And Tim, if, if you could give your opinion about that. Uh, I, I can tell you. First of all, I understand, I understand the reason for the sentence because uh, uh, not everybody feels like we always get back to them. But yeah, if you if you advance that motion or you approve that motion um, and um, Jeff or David will get it through the channels and it'll show up before the council, um, uh, I have no doubt we'll get back. And I, and I would I would commit to you that I would I'll do everything I can to make certain that that loop gets closed. Great. So any, I was just trying to, um, I really think one of the first key steps is going to be that public scoping so that any, you know, design and analysis and things can be focused on at least a better understanding of what the public need is now, what the public wants now. So I tried to put those key elements in there, but I'm open to any and all amendments to that language is there a way to share your screen so we can read it because i i would yeah sure again. i'd rather see it myself you didn't memorize it while i was saying it yeah let me move it back over here Thank you. Dan? I find that very well done, uh, brief and to the point. And 
if I add anything else, it'll just be repeating phrases over again, which feels a little bit insulting. Um, so I think you're good the way it is. You know, it leaves us a lot of open room, you know, and staff for that matter, Jeff and David, about how to proceed, you know, getting public opinion, et cetera, et cetera. Where, and, and it shows, I think, that Prab as a board is excited and ready to get going. Um, I, I feel like that's, that's where I'm at, all those things. And I feel like hearing the discussion, most of us are all that way too. So nicely done is my summary. Thank you. Scott and then Nicholas. Um, my, only, my only question is, can we, I mean, is it appropriate to add or should we add um, that, that the members of PRAB already believe that the need exists, right? So um, we're urging city council to, to um, scope the, um, you know, do the public scoping for what, what the actual building will look like. But I, I really like to, I'd like to convey, we've heard from the public over and over again, kind of like what Jeff was saying earlier, um, to, like two or three years ago and um, to now, we constantly hear the public wants this what it looks like and what shape it takes or whatever um, seems to be a detail in the process. But um, I'd like to, if that helps with urgency to council making a decision or helping to advance it at all, um, that would be my two cents. I don't want to cut this off, but I need to leave for a few minutes. So I'm happy to let you all talk and I can come back and join the conversation. I don't know. Is it a rush to vote right now? Why don't, why doesn't the group talk a little more and I'll be back in five minutes and then that way we can all be in agreement. Does that seem better? Sorry. Is that okay? Okay. Sure. I'll be back. We'll wait for you. Do others, I mean, I'm trying to maybe incorporate that because I do think it is. Yeah, I think that looks great. I think something on that would be great. Um, other board members can chime in whether you think that's too heavy handed, but, or it's already assumed in the original. Any detail we request instead of we requests. Ah, uh, yeah. I hate typos, so thank you. It's fun watching you work. This is great. <laughs> Anything that gives anyone any concern? Nicholas? This might be just nitpicky, but um, I just think that the, the the word believes is kind of a soft um, soft way to do it. It should be more like, in our opinion, is kind of a weak way to say it, as opposed to we urgently you know request this, right? Just more of like a tone kind of thing. That's just my my two cents on that. I'm reading, I'm trying to think how to. Yeah, otherwise I like the clear and concise message, especially the, the how it, the last sentence. I think uh, urgently is the tone we are setting there. I think the urgently need maybe offset the softness of the belief. <laughs> yeah. All right.
Oh, you're back, Jeff. That was fast. I've been told there may be one more goodbye, good night in a moment, but I'm not oh, leaving. Okay. I'm staying here. Okay. Councilman? Yeah, I don't know. You, you know you're going to, you'll do what you want to do with this. Uh, at, at the, in that first part of the, of the paragraph, um, to, to is, I think this is an accurate statement based on what you've heard or the input you've received from the community or from the public, you've concluded that um, this should be an urgent consideration or urgently considered what, you know, you'll work out the language. But I do think it's meaningful, uh, especially based on what Scott, uh, how he reflected on the all the input you've had, and I have no doubt that's true. Um, since the uh, the disappointment with the ballot question a couple of years ago, three years ago, um, but if you can ground your recommendation in in public input or what you've heard from the public, I think it strengthens the recommendation. So then you could switch believes now to concludes. Yeah, rather than a belief, it's a conclusion based yes. on the input. That that's, that's the great, point. Yeah, I, I agree. Good feedback. Others. Should I change it to conclude? I'm just looking yes. for nodding. Yeah, I like concludes, but the based in is a soft, is a soft entry as well. So, um, or in large part, just based on public feedback. Not All right, you know, like my qualifier. Thank no, you. Yeah. let's go for the gusto. <laughs> I mean, that's part of our board purpose was we are public and we know folks who are public. So this is what we do. Okay. Councilman, did you have another comment or do you just have your hand still raised? <laughs> no, I just don't know when to pull my hand down. Sorry. <laughs> All right, if this looks okay, I would accept a motion to in this regard, Dan. I move that uh, the PRAB board uh, accepts this, uh, I guess a um, letter to the city council or whatever, a statement to the city council that we approve this and present it to city council. Second, Jeff, are you seconding? Absolutely second that wholeheartedly, and I'm excited. <laughs> All right, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great, the motion passes. Jeff, and I'm Georgia? assuming you're our delivery vehicle. <laughs> yes, could you send that to David and I, that statement? Yes. Right. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Happy to. Great. Well, I look forward to many more conversations about this. Thank no, you, no, Councilman just, Waters. Just one or two, and support. then one or two conversations <laughs> of passes, we're done. Come on. Uh, if only. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other discussion before we move to uh, items from the packet? Okay. Um, anyone have questions or items they'd like clarification from from the, what was included in the packet? Okay. Seeing none. Items from staff. Jeff? So you had uh, made the suggestion about a, a retreat. Is that something we should add on the agenda for next month? Or do you want to talk about that at all this evening if there's even any interest in that? I was going to bring that up okay. under my items from board, but okay. I don't mind whenever. Any other, is it okay if I wait until items from board? 
on yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Any items from staff? David, Steve, Kathy, anything? Nothing here. Thank you. Great. Okay. Items from the board. Yeah. Well, I like the item that you just mentioned, and I was going to chime in on that one. Do you want to say your idea, or does it does it count that you already said it? <laughs> Talk, uh, about the retreat. Yeah, I have an idea for a retreat. I guess I'll just I'll just say it. Like to yeah, me, this is, the thing, this is the reason I wanted to be on the board. What we just talked about, and rather than visiting a um, an outdoor facility like we or a variety of outdoor resources like we did last time, we could say, well, let's visit one of Longmont's recreation facilities but my idea is what if we visited other local recreation facilities that are not part of longmont like for example the apex center down in arvada that's amazing or i don't know of all of them but like maybe that would be a great opportunity to do some fact finding i'm jumping the gun i'm like oh we're doing this so now let's start focusing on what we want to see this rec center be but that's just an idea and we don't need to do that i'm just saying it because i thought of it just now and that's kind of what i do I like it. I might put it in more in the field trip category, though. <laughs> I got confused. I, I confused field trip with retreat. Sorry. But like, I mean, we could have a retreat where we we do some design thinking or something fun like that related to what we envision the rec center. We could each bring ideas kind of similar to the game that Jeff would describe and with the cards. That would be a fun retreat also. Sorry, I confused the field trip with the retreat. Yeah, now quickly, just I put the retreat idea out there just because I personally would really like the opportunity to just learn more about some of the topics that come before us and we don't necessarily have time to dig into them. And I know Council, for example, has study sessions, you know, where they can get together and have presentations or learn about topics without having the sort of formality of, I mean, we would still have to have it as a public meeting, but not having the formality of like voting voting and you know like a business agenda and things like that so i was thinking it would be a good opportunity for us to invite in staff or speakers or you know just to learn about some of the topics so i'd love to hear if anyone else thinks that's a good idea because if not we can just push it to the side <laughs> i do like your field that. tour idea though jeff yeah, go ahead, Scott. Sorry. I oh, know I was just chiming in that saying that I'm all for that idea. I love learning more about um, different aspects that we're talking about because a lot of times we just kind of mention them. So, any other thoughts on the retreat idea? Should we flesh that out a little bit more and? Bring it up next time. Yeah, David and David and I can talk about it and and present next month more more specifics of of types of things or topics that we could talk about that would I think help the the conversation. And I would just add, Paige, that I think that you guys have a pretty engaged staff that you're dealing with, and so we can probably talk for. A lot of time about each of our individual niches within this uh, department. It could go on for a couple of days. We can go to Breckenridge and get a get, you know get a conference room that sort of thing. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I think whatever you guys want to hear about, we would be pretty entertained to to try to stretch that out for as, as long as you want to hear about it. So, David, I was just going to say what Steve basically did. I think staff is fully willing to open up and have longer conversations. I think sometimes when we get a question from staff in this forum, um, I almost feel like we just cut them off a little bit short because of the time piece. So if we could dig a little deeper, I think staff would appreciate that. And if we feel like we do a better job of explaining it, and then we could even leave us some homework at that point. So I, just so you know, staff is, I think, be very supportive of that idea. Really appreciate that. And we do feel lucky to have great staff that work with our board. Any other items from the board? You guys got all your conversation out about the rec center. <laughs> Dan? Well, I hope this is the right forum 
but I'm reading uh, David's update, and then right after it was Dan's update. And what I noticed was that in David's, the same six or similar six park and trail development items are there. Uh, it looks like it's uh, Kathy, Kathy, Steve, 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 Kathy. And I know that you guys are busy as heck. You've told us that before, Steve. But then I noticed on the next page, Dan got to hire two new people. Um, and I wonder, is that something we should be involved in as a board? I mean, you know, encouraging the city to get you guys more resources or is this out of our purview? I'll, I'll use this as kind of, I'll jump right in, I think. So I, I've been very tentative in trying to use this board to try to get certain things for the staff. But I think this board and being with it now five years and knowing that it's pretty obvious as you look at our work plans and what you think it needs to move us forward, um, I think having those conversations are important pieces. I think there's no way that I could sit here and talk to this board and say that we have a work plan that we know we're behind on. And there's no way we can do that without getting additional staffing to help move it forward or help be more honest with this board and say the work plan probably needs to reflect what we really can get done. So um, I guess what I'm going to say with that is this board is, I think, smart enough and aware enough and has the information laid out there to um, try to say if we'd like to move things forward, there's certain resources that we could probably use. And I'm, I'm happy to have those conversations and I think just reading through this packet, you get that you get that information, and I, I I think that's beneficial. The piece I will tell you though is that in um, Dan's world in open space, you're not really competing with the general fund. So that's the piece too that as you look at Ken Houston, my water resources group, Dan, and the open space, we have a fund that you know our, our community has dedicated funds to say we think these are important areas, and we need to have dedicated funds to make sure we can purchase, maintain, and manage those. Um, done the same thing with our parks program, but again, we're going, as Steve said earlier, we're competing with fire and police and other general fund items out there. So it really um, can have your voice sort of silenced as you kind of, it, it gets muted as you get those bigger conversations. So I, I think any chance we get for the community to weigh in on how they think moving forward with these projects is important as an opportunity for our community to kind of help us move those forward, so. Thanks. I don't mean to, I'm not trying to complain. I No, you know, and I, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying not to all. do either, so. I want to help is the bottom line, and how can I, I help, <laughs> right. And I think, okay. um, I just wanted to add, I think David had a good segue into what I was thinking. Um, I recall working with the board when we did the Parks, Recreation, and Trails Master Plan back in 2013-ish. Um, but one really great educational exercise that the board asked was they wanted um, to really understand all of the funding sources um, in the city's budget, especially related to parks, open space, recreation, and trails, and just understand kind of what David, David walked you through, the whys of why can we fund this and why can't we fund that and kind of the history of that. Um, so that might be um, something educational that you might be interested in. Um, I thought it was really beneficial um, when we worked with the board on that. Um, there's an appendix in the current master plan that kind of has it all lined out if you're interested. I will also note that on our calendar for March in conjunction with the capital improvement project, there's a little bullet that says capacity and staffing needs in recreation, parks, and open space. So I'm hoping that you guys will share with us sort of any any capacity gaps that you see that you know we might want to consider in whatever way is appropriate. Thank you. I missed that page. Thank you. Any other items from the board? Great. Okay. If there's nothing else, I think we're ready to adjourn. I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yes. I would gladly make a motion to adjourn this meeting. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second. Dan? 
Scott got me already. All Go right. For it, Scott. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All right. The motion passes and the meeting is adjourned.